Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match. A few exhibition matches today, but first one will be on Twilight of the Elders. We haven't seen this in a long time. Between J Raccoon and Crisp. J Raccoon going for Grecum, he's in the northeast corner of the map, and Crisp in the southwest corner of the map has not yet chosen his species. Now, oh, yes, he's chosen Vecure. Sorry, the image showed CISO. I'm not sure which one he's going for. He appears to have committed to Vecchior. So he is Vecchior versus Grekim. And Twilight of the Elders is a map we have not seen in a very long time. So I'll just go over it briefly. We have main bases at the northeast and southwest, which from the last time we've seen them have had the resources halved. Just sort of Cold Fort style, but also the original map was built around main bases being extremely large and having tons of resources just to basically counter hyper expansion by making it not really feasible. Now, resources have been reduced. Also, expansions at the south and east side of the maps in the centers. Small crates in the center as well, which appears that Jericoon is very quickly moving to, and the east crates as well. And a base in the northwest with many, many, many crates, but is also in perfect position to be highly contentious between the two sides. So whoever, if only one person goes for it, they're at a major advantage, but if both players go for it, it's going to be a major battleground. And Crisp is very quickly handling just building up his own main base, setting up all that stuff, getting his opening RPs, not going to be too aggressive from the looks of it, but he is sending out some scout forces as usual. And Jay Raccoon, like I mentioned, he is very quickly setting up, moving his triad over to the East Center expansion and very quickly building up RPs there. So he has a few RPs in his main base and building up more at this expansion here. So he's definitely being aggressive and moving out and taking territory. And he's raised his, his duo again. I I think he might have be trying to go for a, an all-in. Yes, I do suspect he's going for an all-in. He's sending his forces straight to the south side of the map while Crisp... Scouting forces find one of the Octos, so Jericoon. Well, actually, it's he's four RPs and an Octo. He's, he's for two minutes and three seconds in the game. He is doing okay. Crisp, on the other hand, hasn't really built too much. He is jumped back to the 150 point. Probably just waiting for enough to get a QPRP from there to be able to build some vehicles and, well, build a depot, build vehicles, go work from there. Though. He is trying to deal with this Octo, trying to micro around that, make sure that he gets rid of it before it deals any real damage. J Raccoon, on the other hand, he is, like I said, he's going for this. He's sending his forces right down to the south center of the map. If he sent them, I mean, he's clearly just expanding around. He's not going as much for an all in as one might expect. He's simply just spreading himself very thinly. Though I'd be very surprised if he started going to this area here on top of this little ridge, then he would be obviously going for an all-in. He'd be very, very aggressive from there. And Crisp still trying to deal with this Octo while building up a foundation for his depot that he's going to need fairly soon. Looks like he's just letting the Octo go into his main base and having a Zion Veer deal with that while this is not properly propagated. His Tethvir and Shinveer are not doing enough, but he... That is what he's waiting for, though. It looks like he is definitely waiting for just the Octo to come along. While J Raccoon, he has himself set up actually pretty well completely here. This is, seems to be where he is just stopping his walk. It's the south end of the map, so like I said, very aggressive, though fairly risky. If Crisp were to find this out, I mean, we're at five minutes in the game, and Crisp is about two minutes down from here. If Crisp were to figure this out and deal with this, get his depot up and send his Zion, Veer, or Zion Pulsar down there, he's getting the depot up now, he just needs to get the QP... Get rid of this Octo, get the QP he needs, tur turn this Zion Veer into a Zion Pulsar. But unfortunately, he doesn't have any way to heal it, and this Octo will be able to kill it. So that Zion Veer will not last long. And this RP, not in position to actually do anything yet. A bit too far away from the crates to actually harvest from them, which is unfortunate, but it does mean that he is going to be... He has to replace that RP, and there we go. Now he's going to put it in a position where it can actually build. But he needs to replace that RP. He needs to make sure that it all lines up so that he can actually build the depot and build everything he needs to build. The Octo is still coming. Jericho has not echoed this out. And there we go. Crisp is now setting up the RP into a good spot. Moving his Zion Veer to a point where he will, he should be able to take out the Octo. His Shinveer and Tethveer not actually doing too much to scout out. They 
they've not found anything. They're just hanging out in the center of the map. Crisp is not scouting as well as he could be. And Jay Raccoon at the 7 minute mark has a Pharopod. No Chronoporting though, but he does have a Pharopod, which he is using fairly effectively to scout out make sure that Crisp is not taking the expansion to the northwest. Very good idea because that expansion, like I said, is huge. You do not want to let your opponent get that expansion if you can avoid it. And Crisp, on the other hand, setting up a comm hub, but probably in a not great spot. I mean, where when he is, right when Zion, or the Sippy and the Faro get in here, his Shinbeer Tethyr could just come in and tear this apart. I don't know. I guess he has not seen what's going on, but he's clearly not scouting out. He's clearly not expecting that his opponent is walking along and taking all the bases along the southeast por portion of the map. And two Zion Veers are able to get rid of the third one in tow, but two Zion Veers able to get rid of the Octo. That Jerakun is going to try to deal with this, but I think that Octo is going down. He Actually, he might be able to take care of this RP in the meantime, but no, Jerakun is retreating. He is getting himself in a position where he's not going to have to worry about this, so Crisp really should undo or abort one of the. Yeah, undo. One of the Zion Veer constructions. And then get up to. And from there, if he does that, gets all that set up, then he'll be able to quite nicely just go in with, well, with everything, really. I mean, he has Zion Veers. He can easily get a depot. From there, he can easily get himself, and there's the depot right there, get himself Zion Pulsers and tear apart this. And he does have a Zion Veer going over to the expansion, so he will find it. This, so once he finds that, then Jericho's going to be in a bit of trouble. And Jericho has really no backups other than the Arcticus over here. He is pretty much alone. He just has this fat reef coming up, and that research sound is totally inaccurate for this point in time. But the reef is only building up the 430 mark, and it looks like this Octo will be able to block off the Zion Veer. The Zion Veer will not be able to scout it, so Crisp still in the dark about what Jay Raccoon's plans are. Though with these two Zion Veers, this iteration should change this, so the Octo will be destroyed in time. Crisp, however, still doesn't seem to be aware of what Jericho is up to, but he has time. The Reef is still not completely built up. He can still go from there, figure out when advanced structures are being built, and then intercept this entire base before Pharopods come up. And yes, Zocto is going to go down. So Crisp will find out what's going on in about a minute. While well, J Raccoon is still expanding to it, he's probably not too worried about Crisp finding this base quite yet, but he is still setting up some defenses. I really would be curious how how suspicious Crisp is of this expansion over here. If he's aware of it, if he even knows it could exist, if he's just scouting because might as well scout nearby, maybe set up his own expansion there. But no, Crisp is also going to the northwest. He is not ultimately going to the southeast. This is very unfortunate. That is that is probably going to cost him the game. I mean, I hate to seem like I'm exaggerating here, but this is all J Raccoon has, and if Crisp avoids it, he's going not to have an easy time. But if he takes the Northwest, the Pharopods are prepared for it. That's the problem, is that Jericoon's already set himself up in the future to deal with this. Though, see, Jericoon's construction... No, it's consistent. Jericoon's construction continues along, so Jericoon has actually prepared himself to deal with the Northwest expansion if Crisp takes it. So, this is going to be very difficult for Crisp to deal with, and Crisp actually now aware of this. He has jumped forward and sees that Pharopod there. So Crisp aware that he's going to have to figure out what to do about the Pharopod possibly before it comes up, and he has several minutes to do that. His Zion Pulsers could get Skip Teleport upgraded. They d he does have the resources to do this, but does not have the Chrono Energy to do so. While Jiro can send an Octo in to, well, not really do much. Zion Pulsers will tear the Octo to shreds. And it looks like Crisp has found that the main base is empty, at least. So that's a good hint. I don't see him ordering any units to deal with the bases from southeast or the east and south, I should say, but he is aware that something's up. Certainly he's aware that Trad has been moved, but I... He does not show any real suspicion about where it's moved to. He certainly doesn't expect it to have moved to any of the expansions at this point. And this is when he needs to. The Spire is up. Jiracoon... Jiracoon hasn't built anything yet because he can't before the Pharopod. He doesn't have QP quite yet, but he will with... basically now. And... That'll be... I mean, really, it's a matter of Jericho. If he goes back and starts paying more attention, builds a Pharopod even earlier. But now, it's too late for Crisp. Crisp might be able to go back and deal with this. And there's that Pharopod. Pharopod being built up, so this Zion Pulses can do nothing. Crisp will need to get Teth Pulses. He'll need to get 
or Tet Searchers, either way. You will also get, need to get Detection, which means either Shin Beer or Shin Searcher, which... He does have a Shin Beer, which is nice, but he doesn't have any way of dealing with air, and that's the big problem. And, no, I don't think he's even suspicious of what's going on. He is just taking out that Northeast main base. Main ba his main base taking a bit of damage, not a big deal, because... Really, he can go back and deal... Oh, actually, wait, no, this is an unplayable pass. This is a bit of a big deal. He has his Zion Beer to help deal with it, but it's not going to be enough. He... Yeah, this is actually pretty big. So, the Octo take out, took out one of the foundations. Could take out the Depot, but he is... No, he's going to be able to stop that. Zion Pulse is coming back. We will we'll deal with that. Jay Raccoon is about 30 seconds up with that Farapod that I mentioned. And the Farapod coming in to help harass, and... So, Jay Raccoon has actually changed the Farapod construction timing, and... Build a second one as well. So, J. Raccoon, I think, has just won the game at this point. I do not see a way out of this. I mean, Crisp could go back, build Teth Pulsers and Foundation, but he has not done so. And I don't know if he's aware that Foundations provide detection either. Though he doesn't have auto defense, so he can't actually use that for any real damage. But if he has Teth, teth Pulsers come out of Foundation, he would at least buy him a bit of time. I mean, the Foundations are fairly expensive, but it's easier than trying to get a Shin Beer, and Shin Beers are not going to last too much longer than a Foundation. And... There we go, it looks like... Oh, the Shin Beer actually is just in a, just the right position that can avoid getting hit by the Farapod, but it doesn't matter because the Octo, avoiding the damage from before, it will be able to take out the Shin Beer, and that will be the end of it. Teth Beer coming up as well, but really the Teth Pulsar is what's needed. He needs to directly build that Teth Pulsar, and he's not doing so, the Teth Beer... Not turning into a Teth Pulsar either, but he looks like he probably will be. Moving it near the depot, but no, he's not turning into a Teth Pulsar. Why is it not a Teth Pulsar? That should that needed to become a Teth Pulsar. I don't know why he did not make that a Teth Pulsar, because that's... Okay, now he's getting Teth Pulsars, but he had a Teth Beer right there. He could have turned into a Teth Pulsar, and now it's over. He, I say that because the depot was almost dead. The Teth Pulsar from the Teth Beer would have been up in time. But this is game. This, this is it. Crisp has lost the game rather handily. I didn't expect quite this sort of setup, but like I said, the walking triad, very powerful, and it's easy to stop if you spot it. And like I said, Crisp had the hints from the main base. Just need to check the expansions, check the nooks and crannies in between expansions, figure out where that triad is, because Jared had really no defenses. So the first little bit in the game, he had no way around this. But yeah, Crisp losing a thought trying to get a foundation, but losing his annex, this is game. It's just a matter of when he's going to surrender, and once that happens, then that'll be it. And it looks like Chirikun also actually moved his main base RPs all the way to the northwest anyway, so it doesn't even matter that he attacked the main base. So Crisp really has dealt no damage to Chirikun, ultimately. Which must be kind of maddening for Crisp, but yeah, this is a bad spot to be in. So, main tips I'd say for Crisp is use your depot earlier on, Scout around for expansions when dealing with Grekum, even early in the game. And when you have Teth Pulsers, or when you have Teth Beer, get the Teth Pulsers. Also, foundations are great are detectors. They aren't great detectors, but they exist. Use them. Oh, apparently this is his first versus Grekum match, too. Well, that... Oh, well, that wouldn't help. A little bit surprising, though. I mean, Grekum has been very popular. The Christmas tournament that recently I casted had mostly Grekum players. So I'm a little bit surprised Crisp has not encountered Grekum in his playtime thus far. But, well, first time for everything. So now that he knows, he will have some idea of how the, they handle it. They walk triad really well, and their expansions, they just can go around the map and be wherever they want to be, pretty much. So that's all I really have to say on that note. Looks like the tour is going to be talking for a while. So clearly, Crisp won. So good game for J Raccoon. And that will be it for this game. So I'll be back shortly just with another game. Another couple games before I stop casting for today. So stay tuned and I'll be back in a minute.